Hello, I'm Liquid. <laughs> and I'm Vapor. And this is us melting. I mean, hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episode 7, Parental Glidance. Insert groan here. A.K. the death of many Rainbow Dash headcanons. Uh, yes, and also the once more clarify, I'm melting. <laughs> it's a little warm here today and we've turned off the fan to cut down on background noise to be filtered out. Yep. But now onto the actual episode, which was one of the few ones that make us cringe, but we were actually able to watch it just fine. Without pausing. Normally the cringe-worthy, we either have to pause repeatedly, Equestria Girls, or just skip Steven Universe. <laughs> yeah, we, could, we couldn't watch that episode at all. <laughs> we tried. I tried twice to watch that episode. I couldn't. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so now on to this episode that we actually watched. Mm-hmm. And this is like the best retcanon ever of how we have not seen Rebo Dash's parents. It's a very valid reason that they wouldn't have been there. Yes, because she just, I'm not even dealing with them. Just not. They're not going to know anything about what I'm doing. But if they're that big of fans of her... Why wouldn't they try to keep in touch? Also, why haven't they been reading the newspapers? Obviously, it would have been somewhere in Clasdale that there was a new Wonderbolt and the name would have been in the article. Yes, and considering all the times Rainbow Dash and various members of the Main Six have been in Cloudsdale, and um, let's not forget how Rainbow Dash was... Um, enticed to switch over to the Cloudsdale team for the Equestria Games, though she did ultimately play for Ponyville. Still, that was the Equestria Games. They should have known that she was playing in that. Yeah, it's also that question about whether or not her parents actually knows about her saving Equestria multiple times. I know it was kind of off to the side in Skulu and the mother's conversation. The fact that they don't know about her being a wonder what kind of brings into question. <laughs> because... Scootaloo and Wendy do a swap of memorabilia. So all those Ponyville headlines are those things that they knew about but didn't have any of the headlines and stuff? Or did they not know any of the thing that was in the Ponyville headlines until Scootaloo and Wendy started trading stories? Also, since she has Celestia memorabilia plates, wouldn't she have heard about... I don't know, the new princess in town, as it were. Well, maybe she had heard of Princess Twilight Sparkle, but not that Rainbow Dash was part of her entourage. But Rainbow Dash? No, well, now that I think about it, if she's not keeping that in touch with her parents, she may not have told them that she was even friends with someone named Twilight Sparkle. Well, she probably hasn't, but, you know, they've been officially recognized in all these events, you know, or even just attended things like the gala so if the parents moderately kept up on news i'm pretty sure rainbow dash's name would come up yeah and like i said she's been in cloudsdale so she every time she's gone to cloudsdale she's managed to avoid running into her parents in town i understand staying away from the home i understand that there isn't really telephone service or internet but still yeah, it seems like the best form of communication is through Dragonfire. Quite. Which, I just realized we haven't seen much of recently. No, we haven't, because we're not sending weekly letters to Princess Celestia. And Celestia doesn't seem to be communicating all that much with Twilight remotely. It, most of what we've seen with them has been in person. So, yeah. It's a decent idea for the retcon, but we can pick a lot of holes in it. Mm -hmm. Well, you can always pick a lot of holes in any kind of story. I've seen you taking really good stories and go, well, 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 and maybe, but no. <laughs> true, true. So, yeah, I could see her being embarrassed by them, and I totally understand her blowing up at them and being completely mortified that they showed up because your behavior patterns are... They're like cyclical responses. An event happens, your brain searches through for a similar event and goes, okay, this event's similar, so you should do this. 
That's how things become habit. So when she was actually embarrassed, when her parents were cheering when she was terrible, when they were still cheering when she got better, that reaction of being embarrassed was already part of her mental cycle. Mm. That's a good point. Those psychology classes are paying off. <laughs> uh, and then that fun realization of, oh, because they were so supportive, that's part of why I'm awesome. Great, now I feel like a jerk. Well, they did go a bit overboard, and you mainly blew up because you held it bottled up for so long. That's a lesson we dealt with not too long ago, not to bottle up your emotions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Starlight. <laughs> yeah. I really did enjoy the parents' reactions, though, to everything. I also liked the early reactions. Scootaloo. <laughs> it just seemed a tiny bit overboard. You're friends with Rainbow Dash, so could you calm down just a tiny bit? You didn't go this crazy when you first met Rainbow Dash. I, I love it though. Honey, something's wrong out here. <laughs> what is it? I don't know, but you just made it worse. <laughs> I love the, you've been wearing that this entire time, have you? Well, it's not actually, it's just laundry day. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. Also that they kept everything in just wow they bronzed everything pretty much what happened to that gold medal oh i bronzed it <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very familiar where have i heard that from before the only time i ever recall hearing it was on the live action television show welcome freshman so the principal used to do a bunch of freshman jokes over the intercom mm. So any other points you'd like to bring up? Uh, the rest of the bolts were actually kind of cool about the whole thing. Oh, they were awesome about it. They teased her a little bit about it, but they were awesome about it. Yes, especially considering when you look at the flashbacks, it looked like Spitfire was there in second place. Mm -hmm. And speaking of callbacks, both Vapor Trail and Sky Stinger were in the foreground of one of the cut two shots. Establishing shots, I should say, because it was an establishing shot of where a building was. Mm -hmm. So, nice to see them again. Mm -hmm. I just can't believe we were getting another episode that had the CMC in it so quickly. As soon as Lux told me the title of the episode, I went, really? Scootaloo? We're going to have an episode with Scootaloo? We just had a CMC episode. And while Scootaloo was in it, she wasn't the focus. Mm -hmm. And I thought we might actually finally get to see Scootaloo's parents. Yeah, this was another episode where they kind of skirted along the edge of whether or not she actually has parents. Or whether or not they're good parents. Because if you pay attention, I think the way she said it, she has parents. But they haven't been very supportive of her. Or cared about her that much. Yeah, so it could be the classic uh, trope of the absentee parents. Hmm. That they're very busy doing important things, so they're never around. Hmm, also possible. But yeah, they really skirt it. They're like, yeah, we're not going to answer it still. Like, come on! That was such a tease! Mm-hmm. Okay, we got Rainbow Dash's parents, which, that was nice and, you know, a bit of retcon. But I really thought, based on the episode title and the fact that it started with Scootaloo doing something stupid... <laughs> Yeah, she was like, I think I have second thoughts about this. <laughs> Nailed, Nailed it. it. <laughs> so, yeah, I was thinking we'd have the actual parental figure step in and kind of uh, tone down her reckless ways. Or someone swoop in actually as she was flying up in the air because I thought she was going to miss Cloudsdale, start falling down, and then some pony was going to catch her midair. Like Rainbow Dash? Or her mother? Or father? Hmm. Ooh. I just got an interesting idea. Maybe her parents work in Cloudsdale. But then why does she live and go to school in Ponyville? Because she can't fly. Well, Fluttershy wasn't a very strong flyer either. Yeah, but she can fly. And she can at least hover over areas. Scootaloo can't even really do that. So maybe they um, have a house down there for Scootaloo's safety and mostly work up in Cloudsdale. So that's why they're gone most of the time. Entirely possible. 
It's just that, okay, she can't fly, but she still has the Pegasus ability to walk on clouds. So as long as she stays away from narrow pathways, should be mostly safe. But good thought, good thought. I got a bunch of theories. They're right here. Holds up his jacket. Theories. Theories a dollar. Why not? Why not theory? <laughs> that will be three dollars at my coffee link. <laughs> <laughs> Self promotion for the win. Smiles. <laughs> yeah, because I found that very little embarrasses Lux Brush. <laughs> yep, very little does. Yeah, and just to clarify, even though this episode largely about being embarrassed by your parents, we're not planning on trotting out stories of how our parents have embarrassed us. No, nope. mostly because my parents haven't. Um, okay, maybe one. <laughs> I was an adult, so. Ah, I was in Hot Topic with my mother, and she held up a shirt and went, Hey, honey, look at this. I heart hentai. Just what you want to have your mother hold up in a store and go, Hey, honey, you like this shirt? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the things you learn on the internet. Yes. And I, I wasn't particularly embarrassed for myself, because... I was just like, okay, the embarrassing part is telling her no and what the shirt says. <laughs> yeah, at least it wasn't all in Japanese characters and you find out later thanks to Google Translate. <gasps> <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. One of my fears of shopping at Hot Topic is picking out a cool looking shirt that I don't recognize the fandom of and later finding out, oh, I didn't really want to support this. Mm hmm. Good point, good point. There's this great comic I've seen recently. Oh, this fandom looks fun. Opens up the door. Things are on fire. People are fighting each other. Closes the door. Yeah, I'm not gonna... No. <laughs> no, but back to the episode. Which was basically a cast of four characters. Rainbow Dash, Scootaloo, and Rainbow Dash's parents. I like Rainbow Dash's parents, I have to say. They, they sound like fun people to hang out with. Oh, well, they're very nice people. I mean to just take in Scootaloo like that, especially with the first impression that she made of just screaming her lungs out. Also, I love how he was mowing the clouds. Mm-hmm. Though it looked, even though it's like supposed to be mowing, it looked like something that was flattening the clouds. So it looked more like a roller you would use to flatten ground. You've never used a push mower. It, yeah, I said, I said it looked like a mower, but it also, because they didn't have any blades on it, it looked more like one of those things you'd use to flatten ground. Yes, I think it was doing more flattening because why would you cut up pieces of the cloud like you would a lawn? But the impression was, you know, here's this guy just mowing his front lawn and suddenly this girl's head pops up through the ground, i.e. cloud. Mm, nailed it. <laughs> oh, miss, are you all right? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Scootaloo, fangirl much? Yeah. Also, I, I like how you withdrew your support temporarily. Yeah, I don't agree with what you just did there, and that's not the pony I want to be inspired by, so yeah, I'm gonna redo my whole report. And then, Scootaloo, wait, can I tell you something? Yeah, I guess. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I forgive you. It's like, yeah, fangirl, I love you, I hate you, I love you again. <laughs> oh my god, they're so hot! But they're dating someone, I hate them. <laughs> Do you hate him? No, I hate them. <laughs> And they break up, oh my god, I love him again! And that was a seriously carbo-loaded sandwich. And thank you, Cheerilee, for not giving the report an A. Mm-hmm. I also like Cheerilee also, um, it's, um, quiet, please? This, this is not a rock concert. I love her. She's done so well. Yes. And just how 80s Rainbow Dash's parents looked in those uh, early childhood photos. Mm-hmm. There were some wonderful photos overall. Lots of young Rainbow Dash. Also, I love the touch of the motivational poster having a tortoise on it. That was nice, considering she eventually has Tank as her pet. Uh, another little nitpick of the parents. Okay, it's alright to yell and cheer at the event. Fireworks, though. Safety hazard. Also, don't you need a permit for that? Even if you don't. Safety hazard. You are flinging something into the air where the performers are flying at high speed. And these things are being launched at high speed, and they're explosive! 
Yeah, it seems a little bit like throwing meat in the tiger cage while the tamer is sticking their head in the animal's mouth. Yeah, I was thinking it was more like throwing honey onto a person in a bear cage. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Considering the high speed, it's more like throwing giant marbles or a spike strip onto a racetrack during the middle of a race. I love all these analogies. Let's move on! <laughs> Quite. Uh, I had nothing to move on to. I was just thinking we should move on. Well, I, I don't necessarily feel that we have a lot of depth here. Almost the entire thing was Scootaloo and Rainbow Dash's parents being thrilled about how awesome Rainbow Dash is. That's a valid point. Still an enjoyable episode, though. Yes, even through the cringiness. Mm -hmm. And oh my god, her parents saved everything. That was a diaper! Mm -hmm. And the effects on the door, that was awesome. I love that little moment. Great timing. Yeah, great door. <laughs> yeah, I installed the sound effects myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. That was a great way to break the fourth wall without breaking the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, we heard that. And then, oh wait, they actually heard that? Oh, that's kind of cool. Wow, her parents are insanely proud of her, and they don't even know all the more recent cool stuff she's actually done. Mm -hmm. We're even questioning how much they actually know about how much she's actually saved the world multiple times, and the fact that she knows a princess. That she's friends with one and actually knows all four of them. That's a good point, actually. She's probably actually pretty cozy with the other ones, too. Yeah, well, she's met all of them. If mm -hmm. you go back through the adventures. Also, she was giving Twilight flying lessons. She was teacher to the Princess of Friendship. Well, valid points. Probably all the reasons why we never heard about it and why her parents ever heard about it. Yes. Though the flip side of that is she's such a glory hound that if she wanted all of that glory and praise rain down on her, why? Because she got it from her parents her entire life. Yeah, but maybe she considers that false praise because of how it started. Getting cheered for the participation sticker, yeah. And that could actually feed back into why she's such a glory hound, because she feels the need to be validated by people who don't necessarily know her. Mm -hmm. Or are predisposed to like and applaud her. Mm -hmm. hmm, interesting. Well, I think it's time to wrap this up so I don't melt anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can turn the fan back on. So, final thoughts on the episode? Uh, cringing, a little hard to watch. Retcon is always difficult to watch, even if it's moderately well done. Shining armor! <laughs> yes. Princess Cadence. Uh, yes. But we really enjoyed those, too. Yes. Yeah, I actually enjoyed this episode. There were a lot of cringy moments in it, but it wasn't the kind of cringe that made me go, oh, ah. The cringiest moment, I have to say, is the title. Right from there, I was predisposed to, oh, is this going to be like when Jane almost fell off Dragon and Dragon got so overprotective that he wouldn't even let her eat a piece of fish because it might have bones in it? Hmm, a reference that I'm like, I think I should know it, but I can't remember. You don't want to know it. Badly computer animated. Some of the vectors are just terrible, especially when you look inside the mouths. Jane and the dragon. Hmm. It was one of those things that came up on Cubo while I was surfing for the actual content that was more enjoyable on Cubo back in the day. Ah, uh, well, this is probably a good place to go into our outro. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 7. Hey, 7-7. Seven, seven. Parental Glidance. Recommended. Well, thank you for... Oh, wait, I did it. Hmm. Hope you've enjoyed. No. Thank you for watching. Mm. Oh. <laughs> well, Lex is trying to figure out how to do our other closing. Please like, subscribe, rewatch, share, comment. If you'd like to see more of Lux's art, you can check it out on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to support this channel financially, Patreon and Coffee. Oh God, yes, please. <laughs> Patreon starts at a dollar and Coffee's in $3 increments. 
So yes, for the cost of a Starbucks, you can support Lux Brush. <laughs>